Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Topic Roadie DAG Mini Bike Pump. Bike mini pumps offer compact form factors that make it easy to carry on rides as a backup for roadside repairs. While there are plenty of mini pumps on the market, there aren't that many that offer built-in gauges like the Topeak Roadie DAG that we have here today. Topeak markets the DAG as one of their most compact and lightest dual action pumps with an integrated gauge. As you can see, packaging wise, very simple. You have a little cardboard backing with the classic Topeak yellow and white color scheme and all the specs printed directly on there. On the back side, you see a nice illustration of how to use it, and then the dual action technology. To take this off, you see we just have to unscrew it as it comes with the bike mount directly onto the cardboard mounting. So in terms of specs, this retails for $44.95. Again, it's a dual action pump, which actually means it's inflating air as you pull back, and then you push back in, so you get a lot more efficiency. This is a 120 PSI capacity with a 36 cc volume per stroke rating. So pretty decent, it's not the most efficient pump that Topeak sells, but for the size, it's quite compact and packs a punch. This has an analog gauge, which is really nice. So you can see here, you have a nice highly legible gauge here than both bar and PSI. And then a aluminum construction, so the barrel is aluminum and the Thumb lock is also aluminum while the rest of it is plastic. As far as what you get with it, obviously you get the pump and you even get the mount for your bike. So it goes underneath your water bottle cage, has a little rubber strap here. You can just pull that off. You can see that holds it securely in place and then you have the pump itself. Now let's take a look at the weight of the pump. So the pump itself is 119 grams while the mount with the hardware and the little spacer there is 19 grams, so pretty lightweight. In terms of dimensions, the Topic DAG is only 8.6 inches long and 1.3 inches in diameter, so it's more than small enough to fit in a jersey pocket or even mounted on your frame. While this isn't the smallest bike pump on the market, again, it's quite compact and gives you enough inflation to repair multiple tires without having to carry CO2 or other tools. Topic has constructed the pump using a combination of aluminum and plastic. So you can see the barrel. That's all aluminum with this nice glossy black finish. The little handle portion is plastic. The main cover here is plastic. And then you have a aluminum thumb lock. So a nice shiny construction with the Topic logo printed on there. And the other basic branding is Rody DAG on the barrel itself. You also have a very large 1 and 1 8 inch analog gauge. So you can see it actually kind of protrudes off the pump itself. It's wider than the barrel, but it gives you a nice highly con high contrast, easy way to see the current inflation pressure. As far as the valve here, this is only designed for Presta valve. So that's why it's part of the roadie lineup. It's meant for road bikes. You simply push it on. You have this nice little rubber cover, open that, push it down on your valve and then pull up the thumb lock. As with other thumb locks, you do need to be careful when it comes down, you can see all snap. So if you have your finger underneath there, it can hurt quite a bit. So you make sure you don't have any fingers or anything underneath here when you're unlocking it. Otherwise, pretty simple design and it is dual action. So you can actually hear this. You're inflating as you pull back and forward. So you get double the efficiency. As far as the inflation portion, you can see it's fairly small. The barrel isn't that long. So you, it almost extends about 50% wider or longer, and then you get that nice inflation action. The handle isn't that ergonomic. You can see it's actually the aluminum portion and then this little plastic extension, but it does feel comfortable. You don't have a fold out handle like the other thicker or longer pumps, but pretty basic setup and you can see it's still quite small. The gauge is also kind of interesting. So it's actually mounted, not on the top where you would expect, it's actually mounted on the bottom and that's because it actually, they, they're expecting you to put the pump on your valve and then look at it this way, which actually makes sense. And that's how you would typically use it. You wouldn't put it on the bottom of your wheel and then do that on the ground. You would put this on the top of the wheel where you can see it and then pump. And then the gauge itself, it's pretty big too. So you have yellow bar values printed on the inside that goes all the way up to eight. Then 120 PSI in the outer ring. It's pretty nice and legible as well. And you can see pretty nice design. 
You have the Topic logo on there as well and a nice big readable font size, so very easy to see. What's nice about this gauge is you can actually see your current pressure and just get the minimum you need to make it home instead of having to guess. There's very little chance you actually can get to 120 PSI as you'll probably run out of energy or patience, but with this at least you can get to 60 or 70 or just enough to get home. Now let's take a look at the pump in action. It's pretty easy to install on your bike. You just pull the rubber cover off, slide it on your valve, and then pull the thumb lock in place. Once it's there, it's actually nice and secure. And you just have to find a comfortable hand grip to do the pumping. The gauge is also well placed, so you can see it right on top. And with the high contrast yellow and white, it's really easy to see the current value. As with any mini pump, these are pretty tedious, so they don't have a lot of volume for strokes, so you really have to be there for a while. And if you want to get to higher PSI, such as 60 to 100, it will take a while, so you have to be prepared to spend a few minutes on the side of the road. Otherwise, it's very easy to get to the kind of a rideable pressure, so you can use this just to get back on the road and then pump it up later. You can see it would have been nice if the top of this was a little bit longer. There's not a lot of places to hold as it's such a small pump, but otherwise pretty easy to use. And then once you're done with it, you can see you simply lock the thumb lock down. Be careful not to lock your finger in there, pull it off the valve, and then place the rubber gasket on top and then put it back into your jersey pocket or saddlebag. Now let's do a quick comparison between the Topeak DAG and a frame pump like the Silca Impero. So you can see in terms of size, obviously the DAG is a mini pump, so quite a bit smaller. The Silica is a lot more expensive too, it's almost double or triple the price, but with this one you can see just how much longer it is, you can barely get it all on camera versus the fully extended length of the DAG. This one is also dual action, so you can see when you pump in and outward, it's actually inflating at the same time, while something like this is a little more traditional where you have to pump in and out. Nice thing about Silica is they have a nice quality, so you can see even though this has been dropped on the road quite a few times, you can see you have a nice anodized finish, high quality rubber mounts to hold this against your frame, whereas the more simple plastic construction of the Topeak. Obviously you can't carry this all the time, it's quite big and it goes on your frame, while the mini pump is a nice backup when you're really in a bind and need to fill up your tires. Now let's go over the pros and cons of the DAG pump. What we like about it is very compact, so it's easy to put in your jersey pocket or your saddlebag. You also have dual action, which makes the most out of each stroke. So when you push inward and outward, you're still pumping air. Also the integrated gauge really eliminates the guessing of how much pressure you have. So rather than just using your fingers to figure it out, you actually have an exact number. The main negatives of this pump is that the volume per stroke is still fairly small compared to the other Topeak pumps. So you will be there for a little bit of while. And the upper portion could be more ergonomic to hold. It's a little bit hard to find a place to place your hand when you're actually pumping the tire. Taking everything into account, would give the pump an 8.5 out of 10. It's a nice compact and portable pump with a gauge. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at sweetcyclist.com, as well as follow us on Instagram at the Sweet Cyclists. This is a Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.